Public health programs are an efficient way to improve health outcomes for a large number of people at a relatively low cost. For a variety of reasons, these programs are often delivered in a school setting. While it might sometimes seem like just more res responsibility heaped onto educators, there are mutual benefits. In this video, we'll discuss some of the broad types of prevention approaches and provide practical strategies for incorporating these into existing school day activities. As defined by the Institute of Medicine, health promotion programs and practices target general populations to promote well-being, build social competencies, and generally support healthy development. School itself is one of our best health promotion strategies, and graduation predicts greater physical, social, and emotional well-being. Universal prevention strategies also target general populations, but according to the Institute of Medicine, they differ in that they target specific prevention goals, such as substance abuse or violence prevention. Schools are great settings for implementing both health promotion and universal prevention programs, not just from a logistical standpoint, but because of their shared goals. Consistent with the Institute of Medicine Health Promotion and Universal Prevention definitions, Tier 1 of the PBIS framework encourages schools to select and implement universal strategies and evidence-based programs that promote healthy development and help to establish positive behavioral expectations for all youth. This early upstream focus can help to prevent problem behavior, mental health concerns, and substance misuse for whole school populations. When effective, these efforts reduce the demand on busy student assistance program teams by reducing the number of youth who need to be assessed and referred to more intensive selective or indicated programming. Despite all of this evidence about the value of prevention, asking school staff to find the time for both learning and implementing a new evidence-based approach can be challenging. Many school staff say, I can't add one more thing to my plate. But consider for a moment the idea that an effective health promotion or universal prevention strategy does not add one more thing to your plate. It is the plate. This graphic from the Collaborative for Academic, Social, and Emotional Learning illustrates how prevention and particularly social-emotional skills can form a strong core for building other skills and supporting healthy development. By keeping in mind the basic behavioral principle that we get more of what we pay attention to, we can justify carving out the time to honor youth strengths, promote healthy choices, and take the time to bond with our students and help them bond with each other. The social development strategy, a core component of the Communities That Care Strategic P Prevention Planning Framework, provides a blueprint for this work. It teaches that youth need opportunities for pro-social engagement, skills, recognition for when they do well, clear standards, and opportunities for bonding with healthy adults. Taking the time to build strong social-emotional skills ultimately creates a more positive school climate and promotes school success by eliminating barriers to learning helping students engage, preventing problem behaviors, and can even prevent depression and anxiety. A 2011 review of research on social-emotional learning programs found an overall significant impact on things like mental health, delinquency, and most importantly for schools, academic achievement. Students who participated in evidence-based SEL programs had academic scores that were on average 11 points higher than their peers. When implemented with high quality, a multi-tiered PBIS approach can reduce alternative education placements, placements and the associated costs. When implemented with Fidelity, one school found that a multi-tiered PBIS model saved the district $166,000 while providing high quality mental and behavioral health services to 100 students, some of whom in previous years would have required a costly out of school placement. The Pennsylvania Commission on Crime and Delinquency has funded nine pr 
promoting alternative thinking projects or PATHS projects since 2011. The teachers who received training and materials through these grants reported that 47% of children had fewer behavior problems and 55% had improved concentration after participating in the PATHS program. These programs bring long-term benefits as well. According to the 2018 Washington State Institute for Public Policy Cost-Benefit Analysis, PASS showed a potential savings of $7,487 for every youth who participated, related to reduced costly problems and better pro-social outcomes for these youth as they grew into adults. There are academic advantages to prevention programs as well. Many social-emotional learning programs can be incorporated into daily activities to support literacy and math objectives. Life skills training teaches media literacy by helping youth learn to detect misleading marketing messages. Uh, numeracy can be incorporated into the incredible year's dinosaur, Dino Dinosaur Counts to Ten lesson um, and pass introduces literacy concepts by reading stories like Twiggle the Turtle Gets Angry. In fact, many prevention curriculums meet the core standards for health education for substance misuse and healthy coping skills. Paths, Project Towards No Drug Abuse, and Life Skills Training are just a few examples and crosswalks of, uh, that more fully explain these connections are available on the Epicenter website. Funding to support schools in obtaining initial training and materials for these models is available from several state agencies, including the Pennsylvania Commission on Crime and Delinquency, your local county drug and alcohol offices, and the Pennsylvania Department of Education. One of the most efficient ways to promote health and well-being for communities is to utilize evidence-based health promotion and prevention strategies that can be delivered to all students via our number one natural prevention system, our schools. These programs are worthwhile for their benefit to public health, but don't forget they also improve the classroom environment and academic achievement.